Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Sir Texalot channel. And so, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I've always wanted to learn how to uh, do coding at some level, right? I, I My real big passion was, man, I want to do, you know, web development. But there's a site called boot.dev, and I wanted to put this on my channel um, and just show you guys a little bit about boot.dev. Boot.dev is a really good site. It's for back-end development. It's about the only site that I know out there that is extremely thorough uh, with training. Uh, Lane Wagner is the creator of the site. He's excellent. If you want to go check him out on YouTube, I don't get any special funding from them or any kind of perks. I just like um, what Lane's doing out there. He's done a really good job. And so I wanted to promote this site a little bit. And I actually just paid uh, for a subscription. Um, the pricing is around $49 a month uh, or $588 a year, but they take it $240 off if you pay $348 all at once, which I, which, you know, it comes out about $29 a month. I couldn't afford that, so I went ahead and did the $49 for now. But anyways, back to my courses. Um, you know, they start you out on the Python, uh, which is pretty cool. And being a system administrator like I am, I have already done a few of the spots, but I'm just going to start here and show you guys this. So syntax errors. I'm just going to read it word for word. Syntax is jargon for valid code that a computer can understand. For example, the following code is invalid syntax, print, um, and then we have the parentheses and then the double quotes and then hello world in the middle. This code is incorrect because it uses a mismatch quotes around the string hello world. And what they're saying is, so you see how this has a single, uh, single quotation mark and then a double here? That's why it's not going to work. So in Python, they can't have two different, two different, uh, you can't have a double and then a single, okay? You gotta have a single and single or a double and double. All right. So by the way, that's called the string. Anything in the middle of quotes is called the string. And then the assignment is there's a bug in our game. Our players are getting mad because they pay us 20 bucks a month to have access to Fantasy Quest. Find the syntax error in the code that's in the code editor, which is right here, the code editor, not the code above, which would be, of course, up here, and correct it. So let's check it out. Print. Print makes something appear on the page. Or sorry, not the page, but the uh, box here, which is going to be um, the, some people call it console or, or you know, Really, that's mainly what it's called is the console, but anyhow, code editor is another word that we use. But anyways, print puts it out here. So we'll see that in a second, but um, basically it executes it visually so we can see it, whatever the command is that we're trying to do. So print, or like in Linux, echo is another example of that. So print, quotation mark, and then there's a parentheses, and then the, the string, welcome to fantasy quest, exclamation point, parentheses. So these two are correct, right? The two parentheses are correct, correct. But it's obvious that we see here at the very end, there is not another uh, uh, parentheses mark, right? There's a left one, but there's not one on the right. That isn't going to work. So if we hit submit, it's going to give us an error. Try again. And then down here, it's going to tell us why. Okay, so let's look at this. Python error, traceback, most recent call last, file, double quotes, uh, exact line five, in module, file, string, line one. Okay, string line one. We know it's a string because it's in quotes, line one. Okay, so that's where the error is. And then it tells us, print, welcome to Fantasy Quest. So it even points it to the error. If you see the little carrot right there, it's saying, hey, that that thing there is not good. Syntax error, which is basically a grammar error. You could look at syntax as grammar for programming. No matter what language it is, closing parentheses does not match the open parentheses. It actually tells you in this error what the problem is. So we're going to change it. 
We're going to change it to a closing parentheses. Now we're going to hit submit and voila bang, you gain 270 XP experience points and we're on to the next part of the lesson. Boom. Next one is syntax errors quiz. What does syntax mean? It is the rules for valid code in a programming language. Boom. Confetti. Gained another 135. We're going to hit the over arrow again. What happens if you try to run code with invalid syntax? The computer will freeze. The network will disconnect. You'll be provided a syntax error message and the code won't execute. Boom. That's it. So, gain another 90 XP. We're going again. This is an optional challenge. You can skip to the next chapter if you want. Startup bug. Fantasy Quest has a bug in its server code. The code is supposed to print messages indicating the game server has started successfully. The assignment is fix the two errors in the code and get it to run. Okay, so print parentheses, parentheses, double quote, starting up the game server, dot, 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 single quote. Well, we know right there that needs to be a double quote, so we're going to fix that. Print, that's spelled wrong. There's no I, so we're going to add an I. Parenthesis, double quote, local game server is listening on port 8080, double quote, in parentheses, now it should work. Boom, baby. So gain 405 experience and on. So you get the gist of this awesome platform. Now I'm just going to go back here to uh, look at my dashboard. And if I click on here, it should give me, well, let's go to boot.dev right here. Okay, so then it brings me back. Okay, so I'm in this course here. And you notice it has the introduction, chapter one. It's got chapter two variables, three functions, four scope, five testing, debugging, six computing, chapter seven comparisons, chapter eight loops, chapter nine lists, chapter 10 dictionaries, chapter 11 sets, chapter 12 errors, chapter 13 challenges, and chapter 14 is quiz. Now, the back end development career path has 21 courses, nine projects, 50 plus videos, and it's about 12 months, give or take. Complete the courses and projects in order from top to bottom. So you would start with Python, then you're gonna to go to learn shells and terminals, then you're gonna to go to learn Git, and you can see there's 73 different little courses, 65 here, 157 up here, and then there's some optional lessons, 31. Build a book bot, 12 little guided projects, which kind of shows you how to do it. There's a course, learn object-oriented programming, 55 little modules and then 10 optional lessons, which I would definitely take the optional ones, get your money's worth. Guided project, build asteroids, right? Here's another one with a bunch of projects, 18 different things there. Learn functional programming, 71. Then they got 26 optional lessons. Again, I would take all the optional lessons. And we're still kind of in Python here. Build a static site generator, learn algorithms, learn data structures. There's another guided project with Python. And there's a portfolio project, which is extremely important for anybody who wants to get a full-time job in programming. And then of course we have Learn Go, which is Google's uh, language, programming language. And that's got, a, man, 168 and 26 lessons that are optional. Learn HTTP clients. Anybody that knows HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol. That is part of networking, but of course it works um, uh, in programming as well. Uh, give you a deeper understanding of what that really is. Build a web crawler, the guided project, 11 little areas there. Guided project, build a poke decks, another one. And so I like this, how we're doing projects. We're doing guided projects too, which is good. And they're throwing videos in here, but it's not all videos. I think sometimes when we do videos and all we're doing in videos, it kind of gets in the way of our learning a little bit just because we're not reading as much. In the real world, when you're a programmer or a DevOps person or really a system administrator or even a help desk person or desktop support, you tend to read quite a bit. I mean, it's not gonna all be videos. You can do a lot of videos, but it isn't going to be all videos. So I like the good mix here. However, I don't like it when there's not enough videos, but there seems to be enough uh, videos in the Python course that I've uh, started to go through. Um, Trash Puppy actually just did a whole uh, review of this course here. 
of Learn Python, uh, and it's really good. I enjoyed uh, it quite a bit. Um, it's it's long, but it's entertaining, and she goes through it uh, step by step. And and so those who do love videos, this Learn Python for Boot.dev is now covered. Trash Puppy is the YouTube channel, and you might want to go check it out. It's pretty cool. All right, that's it for today. I'm glad that everybody stopped in to see it. And I hope this video has uh, helped uh, you guys learn a little bit more about IT and some of the different paths. I subscribe to this because I don't know that I'm ready to become a back-end developer in my career. But what I would like to do is, because I'm in system administration, I would like to learn Python and some other languages in here just to get a little bit more better at scripting and things like that because in system administration we have to write a lot of scripts and things like that and i just think knowing python obviously is going to be uh, very good for me and then of course git if you guys aren't familiar with git git is a uh, repository for programmers it's basically an online you can think of it as a, a cloud-based online uh, file cabinet, you know, for digital uh, code and programmers go there and they deposit their code, which can then be used by one another in teams and stuff like that. Uh, if you're in a, if you're looking for a job, um, employers can look at your GitHub, they call it, and they can, you know, they can look at it. Well, this is a course on that because Git, a lot of it's command line and um, you're going to have to know how to use the command line uh, on Git. I know it you're thinking, well, man, it's just another skill. It, it is, but it's very helpful. And then learn shells and terminals. Obviously, this is going to be really, really good. Bash and that kind of thing with Linux. Very helpful stuff. So I, I just can't say enough about boot.dev. They are awesome. They are really, really helpful. And I think that you guys really should take a look at their site. Um, again, I get no kickbacks. I don't know. Uh, I've never... I've talked to Lane through email in the past, but that's about as far as the relationship has went. There, like literally, there's no connection with me at all. I'm a very new channel, and uh, I have been just using this platform on and off. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I think the I think the price is fairly uh, fair. I wish it was uh, like five bucks cheaper, um, honestly. Uh, for me, I could afford it a little bit better than it probably keep it more consistent. But really for the price, it's not too bad. It really isn't. For what you're getting out of it, it is pretty fair. Um, and they're always updating things. They It's very game-based too, uh, which is kind of nice. You know, those those of you who like, you know, role, role playing and this kind of thing, I think you'll really enjoy Boot.dev. It's got a nice little, um, you know, just theme behind it and things and quest and gamify. It's gamified and it makes it a lot of fun. And there is a very good community also on um on the uh server as well so uh there's a server that you can go to um that i think you guys will just really enjoy as well so again can't say enough about boot.dev they've been rocking it for a um, few years now and i think that they're just excellent and they just keep getting better all the time so again i would give it a shot i would check this out and see what you think all right share in the comments what you think about boot.dev I, I really like their their platform all right bye